Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. We're going to be talking about the how-to today on how we made this knife. If you want to see the more artistic video where we just kind of go through it, you can sit back and relax and watch the video. I'll leave that on my main channel, Wood by Wright. Uh, but for today on this channel, we're going to be going into a little more of the how-to of what I was thinking. Why did I do it that way? This was kind of an experiment for me, so I played around with a couple different options. But uh, let's take a look at it and see what we have going on. This is a project that has been on my list for a long time. Um, I've attempted making knives before on a live video and uh, actually destroyed the knife. It was a, a very bad video. So I wanted to come back and do this again and do it a little bit better. So I'm using a piece of red oak. The most important thing is that the grain be straight from end to end. Uh, red oak probably isn't the best. It'd be better to have a diffuse porous wood as opposed to a uh, ring porous wood. Something like maple would be perfect for it. But it's not bad and it will work well for the, uh, the demonstration here. So I'm going to start by coping it out. I'm using a fret saw or a coping saw depending on what you want to look at it. And then putting it on this bird's mouth. The bird's mouth is just an elevated platform with this hole that you can get into and you can work at it from different angles. It makes sawing intricate and small pieces fairly easy. And it's a really quick uh, way to, to do this rather than having a scroll saw or getting something more like a marquetry saw. And uh, you can make one of these pretty quickly. It just has to have a, a raised platform with a support on it. Next thing I want to do is actually mark off the thickness of the knife because I want the knife to be a lot thinner, about an eighth inch wide as opposed to the handle being the about a half inch wide. Once I've marked that out with the marking gauge, I can come in and saw down the cheeks of the knife. This looks daunting. I don't know why, but these particular types of cuts really scare someone. But if you take your time and you learn how to use a saw so it doesn't wander all over the place, it does pretty well. Now that we've done that, we can cut in the shoulders on this. So you can kind of see this is basically just making a tenon, uh, except for I want to chop this out as opposed to sawing it out. I could do the sawing, but in this case, the, the chopping works just as well. Um, sawing would be a little bit easier if it had a square back, if I did this before cutting it out with a fret saw, but uh, this is just the way I chose to do it this time. Now for the actual knife, I'm going to be coming in here with a set of different spoke shaves and trimming it down and thinning it slowly by slowly, bringing it so that the front edge is sharp and then at the back it is st still the full width of the blade. And I'll be using a bunch of different spoke shaves for getting at different angles and I, I, I like having different ones on hand because each one has a different feel and a different way of working at it. Sometimes you're going to be pushing against the grain or I'm going to be pushing down to then be going with the grain. But right down by the shoulder of the knife I can't use a spoke shave in there so I'm just going to use that with a chisel. A chisel is just a spoke shave without a sole. Or I guess it's just about any hand tool without a sole. <laughs> we can clean in back one side and the other. And then we can flip it around and start working on the handle. The handle is basically going to be the exact same methodology, except for it's going to be rounded rather than being pointed on one side. I'm going to keep going around it, feeling it with my hand, going around it, feeling it with my hand until I get it right about where I want. And this looks like it takes a lot of time on here, but it's something that goes really quickly because it's, it's not something you're... Uh, you're not being really detailed here. You're just getting the rough shape with the spoke shape. You're bringing it down to that, that shape that feels good in the hand. After that, then we can go about refining it and getting it more yeah, nice and comfortable in the hand as opposed to just being the right shape. Work. And that's where we bring in files and rasps. I use these quite a bit on most anything that has a, a, a formed shape. I'll sometimes even bring in rifflers that are smaller and more detailed for getting into corners. But for this, I'm basically just going to be using a rasp. Here is a file card. Um, this allows you to clean out the file so that it doesn't co constantly get clogged up with wood. It just allows it to sharpen it to cut a little bit sharper. Keep on going down with the file, and in some places uh, there's a little bit more work that needs to be done. I'll bring out a rasp because that'll cut in a little bit easier. But most of the time I'm just going to be using the file because most of the material was taken off with the spoke shave. I find this portion of the work to be very meditative. Uh, it's just It's the same motion over and over, but every time it's a little bit different because you're working on a different location, you're different working on a different spot, a different angle. And it's just kind of a, a good way to relax and enjoy the time. Making knives and spoons is a very relaxing time in the shop. 
I'm occasionally just going to step back, take a look at it, make sure it's all nice, clean up the little edges that we need, and uh, keep on going from there. As the shape gets more refined and closer to what I want, the files get finer and finer. And in most of the time, I'm just going to finish it with a file or a spoke shave. But in this case, I decided to bring in the bow sanders. And if you want to see this, I have several videos on making different bow sanders. Uh, they conform to the shape and they fit in. And particularly with something in your hand, having a little bit more of a smoothness of filling the pores with the dust actually helps out a good bit. Now, I was intending this to be more like a Bowie knife and putting a bolster on it, but I decided to uh, actually skip that and just chamfer down these shoulders so that it tapers from the handle into the blade a little bit nicer. Uh, I, I don't know, I may go back at some point and rethink about putting a bolster on there or creating a new knife, but I, I kind of like the, the simplicity of this and bringing it in a little simpler, putting like a 45 degree angle to chamfer it down to the blade. Just using a chisel to slowly work in and bring out those curls really sharp edge just makes this so much more fun and oh yes the curls that's the reason we do hand tools right <laughs> after spending a little bit more time on it coming through and detailing we're getting really close to the finish on this but it's just a lot of little going back and forth and you're never quite done with this you could work on this for the rest of your life and always just have a little bit more to do every time you look at it a little closer you're going to find some other little flaw but at some point you kind of get to a point where you're running into a diminishing returns and there really isn't a perfection there isn't a place at which you can look at and say this is perfect because perfection is a direction not a location now because this is a hand tool and this is wood by right we're going to use boiled linseed oil and something like this works pretty easily because you can just dip it spin it around and coat it on i'm going to let it sit on there for about 15 20 minutes put another coat on it let that dry off and then I'll wipe it off and add some paste wax and it's done. And no, it doesn't doesn't cut in the hairs, but uh, oh well. <laughs> Still applies butter, tastes good, works cool, well, and I'm happy. It's exactly what I'm looking for in a butter knife or a quick letter opener or whatever you want to call the thing. And I had a lot of fun making it. Maybe I'll do another one in the future and do something with a bolster on it. Let's see. So there you have it. A uh, rather simple project that most people could do in under an hour. Uh, it doesn't take that much with a spoke shave, with a couple files, and you can get yourself a knife out of any straight-grained wood. Um, I used red oak on this because I had a good scrap of it, and I kind of like how it came out. I might be doing something a little bit different in the future. I'm thinking about doing one with a bolster or a different shape, maybe a longer, thinner letter knife, uh, but we'll see. I, I kind of like how this came out and that it can stand up on its own. But uh, for now, I hope you like this, and if you did, please leave questions, comments, and ideas down in the comments below, as well as hitting the like and subscribe and the ringing the bell and all those fun things you know about. <laughs> Thanks for being here on Woodbury Right 2, and that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. So, if I lived in Damascus and I made this, would this still be a Damascus knife? Hmm.